So in the next of our videos discussing FastQ Screen, we're going to talk about how to download, configure and run the program. FastQ Screen can be downloaded from the Babram Bioinformatics website. Once here, go to the Projects page and then go to FastQ Screen and click on the link. This will take you to the FastQ Screen home page. To download FastQ Screen, click on the Download Now button. This will take you to the FastQ Screen download page. Here you will see a README file and release notes. You will also see a useful FastQ Screen manual, which is available in HTML format, giving you an overview on how to run the program. Also on this page, you will see the FastQ Screen download archive and a test data set, which you can use to check that the FastQ screen on your system is functioning correctly. So FastQ screen is best run in a Linux environment. So the best way to copy the program is to copy the link uh, like so and then type in wget on the command line in your Unix or Linux environment and provide the full path to the FastQ screen archive. This is quite small and should take about a second to download. And there we will see it there. Also, the first time you use FastQ Screen, it's a good idea to download the test dataset to make sure that FastQ Screen is functioning correctly. To do this, go back to the Downloads page. And when you are there, copy the link to the test dataset and download as before. And now you'll see both files have downloaded. The next step is to uncompress these tar archives. This can be done simply with the following command. tar xvzf and then the name of the tar archive. So first of all let's do the software and there you will see the files being uncompressed. If you type in ls you'll see a new folder has appeared and now we can do the test data set as well so that's simply done in the same way xvzf fastq screen test data set and now they will both have been uncompressed so now that we have downloaded fastq screen we need to configure it to do this navigate into the fastq screen folder In here, you will see a number of files. There is the FastQ Screen program and also the FastQ Screen configuration file example. This is what we will edit to set up FastQ Screen on your system. There are also other important files, including the FastQ Screen documentation in both Markdown and PDF format, along with a README, the release notes, and the license agreement. So now we need to create a configuration file. The best way to do this is to copy the example that is already there and call it fastqscreen.conf and it will have been created like so. When fastq screen runs it looks automatically for a file called fastqscreen.conf in the same folder in which the FastQ Screen software is found. What this means is that typically you should be able to use the same configuration file over and over again for different samples. This makes FastQ Screen very convenient and easy to run. The next step is to edit the configuration file. To do this, open the configuration file in your favorite text editor. In my example, I'm going to use Emacs. So here you can see the contents of the configuration file. The first part of the configuration file allows you to set the aligner you'll be using for the mapping. The choices of aligners are Bowtie, Bowtie 2 or BWA. Simply uncomment the aligner you wish to use and then type in the full path to that aligner in this line here. 
Remember when you do this, you need to include the executable file name of the aligner itself. For example here, the executable file name is bowtie2 and that file is sitting in a folder also named bowtie2. The next section allows you to set the path to Bismarck, but you only need to do this if you are going to screen bisulfite libraries. After that, you can set the number of threads you're going to use. This will be limited by the number of cores on your machine. This allows you to run FastQ screen in parallel and should improve processing time. Next is a section named databases. It is here you set the path to the genome indices you will be screening against. As before, to edit this, simply remove the comment out symbol and then add edit as required. Here I'm going to be not mapping against the human genome build 37 but 38 which is in a folder named 38 and the base name of the genome indices is Homo sapiens GRCH38. Please note that this base name refers to multiple files i.e. the Homo sapiens GRCH38 is neither a folder nor a file name but the base name of the Bowtie 2 genome indices. I'm also going to set up mouse and that's me done for now. But in here you can add as many genome indices as you wish. What we would recommend is that you include anything which is a likely source of contamination that is any samples that have been run on your sequencer before such as human, mouse, rat, any bacterial species used to build your libraries such as E. coli and common cloning vectors and adapters used to create your libraries. After you've done this all you simply need to do is save the file in the same directory where FastQ screen is kept and this should allow you to run FastQ screen simply in the future on multiple files. So now that you have configured FastQ screen, let's try it on the test data set to make sure everything seems to be running correctly. We've previously extracted the test data set, but for now let's just copy it into our current working directory. So if we do copy FastQ screen test data set FastQ screen dot FastQZ and now it will be copied into our working directory. And now all that's left to do is simply run FastQ screen. FastQ screen is an executable file, so all you need to do to run the program is type in the name of this executable file. In this case, it's found in the FastQ screen folder. So to run FastQ screen, type in like so and then type the name of the file you wish to process which here is the test data set and now FastQ screen will run and I'm just going to pause the video for a few moments until the results are processed OK FastQ screen has now run you should see output similar to the following the first line shows you the FastQ screen version that was run the next line shows you the subset data set for time reasons, FastQ screen does not usually process a full data set, but instead will process a subset of the full data set. The reads to be processed will be selected from the full data set at regular intervals throughout the file. The next line shows you the configuration file that was used, and after that reports the aligner that was used to perform the mapping. After that we see how many threads were used, the more, of course, the faster the data is processed. We can see that the human and mouse reference genomes were added. The test data set was then processed. It was found to be quite small in size, and so the size reduction step wasn't necessary. The mapping was then performed, and then FastQ screen ended perfectly normally, reporting this by saying process complete. What we should now see are some files which have been generated. We see an HTML file has been created, a text file and a PNG file. So let's have a look at these files. 
So let us look first at the HTML summary report that has been generated. Here you should see a graph of the mapping results and then the same results displayed below in a table. What you can see is the majority of results mapped against the mouse genome, which is as we would expect since this is a mouse sample. In addition to the HTML summary report, there is a PNG file displaying a graph showing the same results. The table displayed in the HTML summary report is also reproduced in a text file. So now that you've processed the test data set, you should have found results looking very similar to this. Maybe not exactly because there will be slight variations depending on the aligner you've used and the version of the aligner, but roughly the results should look very similar. If they don't, there's something wrong somewhere in your configuration. Okay. That's really it. I hope that walkthrough FASTQ screen was helpful. There is another video where I discuss how to interpret the FASTQ screen summary results. There are, of course, many other options that are available in FASTQ screen, such as the ability to screen by sulfide libraries or to filter data sets to extract only reads that you're interested in and a range of other features. How to do this is fully described in the documentation found within the FASTQ screen archive. And if you have any other queries, please feel free to contact me.